Hey, I'm working on a quick guide or testing of PCSX2 1.6 for Windows 8.1. So as you can see here, if I push the Windows button, if I go into System, System, you'll see right here Windows 8.1, Intel Core i5, 8 gigabytes of RAM, 64-bit system. And then the video card is a GTX 760. So now we know this is a Windows 8.1. We're going to download 1.6 of PCSX2. Down here, you'll see show previous versions. Don't use stable, that'll be 1.7. And nightly will also be 1.7. But if you use previous versions, you click on 1.6. You scroll down here, release of stable version 1.6. Check that. There's an installer and a portable. I use the portable, which means installer will install to the C drive. Portable, you can stick wherever you want. So that's the one I downloaded. Other things you're gonna to need to download was the last war on GitHub, the CLR Dev9. If you go over here to releases, you'll see these three options right here. We want the X86. And if you go to PCSX2 emulator form, Go to this topic, another USB Q EMU plugin, this time VB.net keyboard only. If you scroll down, down here at the very bottom, CLR USB X86. Now the USB will let you use your keyboard and the Dev9 will let you go online. And then obviously the emulator will let you play a PlayStation 2 game on your PC. So with those downloaded, which I have right here, Dev9 x86, USB x86, a patched fragment disk, the emulator 1.6, and some ROMs, we can get started. So go ahead and extract those here. And then we open up these two. We go into the folder, 1.6, launch the emulator, hit next. Then we got plugins. There we go in and drop these in. We can close those. We can go back, grab the BIOS. Put those there. And then that should be all we need from here right now. All right, so go back, forward, and then we'll pick CLR Dev9 for Dev9 and CLR USB for USB. If we go to configure, hit options. I have only WinSock at the moment. If you don't have sockets or WinSock, you can download PCAP over on NPCAP, I believe, .com. You can download that and then you'll have an option for PCAP bridge and PCAP switch. Use PCAP switch. This is only if you don't see sockets or windsock. Adapter, you could choose or you can leave it on auto. If you have more than one internet connection on your computer, then you might want to select your adapter manually and the rest we're going to leave blank. Hit apply, apply, next. These are the BIOS. I've put in the BIOS folder. Finish. We'll get the log. We're going to go to C, DVD, ISO selector, browse. There's the patch disk right there. So that is selected. If you need to reconfigure something, you can do that for the controllers. I'm using a Xbox One hooked up by USB. So it's all going to detect that. If you need to change your internet settings, you can go back into here again like you did before, which we won't need to. And then USB should just work automatically, but if your keyboard's not working, you might want to come in here where it says device in port one, make sure it's selected to keyboard. And then we're gonna do boot ISO full, because if you do fast, when we do the internet 
configuration for the memory card. Uh, fast will still show in Japanese, even if you have a patched disk. So full will put it in English and make sure widescreen patches is not checked. Do not use the widescreen patches. Uh, one other thing you might want to download is a modified graphics plugin for the emulator. Uh, because when we get to the network screen, everything's going to be jumbled up into the top left corner. And if you use a modified graphics plugin, it will make it display that's supposed to be. If you're using 1.7, then that won't be a problem at all. But this tutorial I'm doing right now is for 1.6 only. So, we get here, go to online mode. You're going to get three options. Two of them are going to be grayed out, so only one's going to be selectable. Oh, and then since this is a new installation, you need to format your memory card. It is unformatted. Would you like to format? Yes. I have an older patch, but it still works. There's a new one that came out this week. So you have connect, select, grayed out, and you have edit. On 1.6, more than likely, all your options are going to be jumbled on the upper left. If you use the modified graphics plugin, it will be shown correctly. But it's not necessary because you only need to do this once. So this one would be add a setting, so push the OK button. This one's talking about your internet type provider. You can just hit OK. Hit right. Hit OK. Hit right. Hit right. Hit right. Hit right. Hit right. Hit OK. OK. Do you want to test the connection? No. OK. Then push the X button, or if you're on the Xbox button, push the A button, which will go back. You need to choose quit. And that's all we need from that screen. Basically, that's just setting a location of where your console is for the internet on your router to understand. So again, you do it once, and that's it. You should never have to go back in there unless you change your router or change your computer to a different location. So now we have the option to hit select, card one, setting one, then we go connect. You'll get the screen, do not hit the X button or an Xbox controller, don't push the A button. Now, on this screen, you are online. As you can see, go up, hit OK. You don't have a character created because this is a brand new installation. Okay. Create a character. to do any port forwarding. That's only if you're hosting an area server. So whoever's 
hosting macro, they had to do port forwarding on their end to allow connections to their area server. But since I'm a player, I don't get port forward. And then when you're done, make sure you always do your gate out to town. Don't just shut the emulator off. And then from here, make sure you always go to log out. Don't just reset the emulator because you will lose all your equipment that you have equipped and your items in your inventory. And that's it. But that's all I have. If you have any more questions, be sure to post them in the comments or hop on to the Discord servers.